Yeah, good evening. It's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Just want to um, spend this video uh, quickly looking at um, the VFO BFO or the oscillator um, and the bandpass filter. So, in keeping with um, what I've done in the past and what I quite enjoy using uh, is the Arduino Pro Mini here. Um, that's driving both uh, the LCD screen and uh, the SI5351 breakout board. Uh, you recall that's the board I got from China. Um, and I'm certainly pleased to see that uh, that's working just like um, the Adafruit um, version which looks exactly the same but just different colour scheme. Um, absolutely no problems at all which is great. Um, I, you know, I, I make no apologies, I, um, I enjoy seeing all the electronics uh, laid out bare. Um, so I don't have anything these mounted on panels or hidden so uh, this is just the way I like it being able to see uh, all the components open. Um, so the way I've got it configured, um, this is obviously going to be a uh, an 80-40 meter radio um, um, CW as well as SSB. So we've got two switches there. Um, the top switch will eventually, well as you can see down there, it's, it's going to be swapping between uh, 80 meters and 40 meters. Um, I haven't finished off, I've only just got some test code in here to get things up and running. Uh, eventually once we switch between the bands um, we'll save off what was the old frequency for the previous band and then go back to um, to the new band. In this case we would be jumping to 40 so we'd update to 7 megs. Um, second switch, uh, we'll switch the radio between um, CW and SSB. Um, I'm signifying here LSB for uh, the reason being you know, 80 and 40 are both um, lower side bands so rather than saying SSB I've just left it saying um, LSB. Um, the way I typically like to do the uh, the frequency change, uh, you'll see the little cursor there. Uh, so the cursor is signifying uh, what digit will be changing by rotating the um, rotary encoder. Uh, if I now push down on the switch and rotate backwards and forwards, I can change uh, that cursor. And when I release, that'll be the one that will start to update. Um, so I prefer that rather than sort of cycling between 100 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 1k or whatever. Um, I guess I'm quite a visual person, so that's that's my preferences. Um, so in terms of the actual circuit, oops, uh, the circuit itself, um, pretty straightforward, really. No, nothing, nothing really uh, out of the ordinary here. Um, the I'll put up the code for the Adreno in due course uh, at the moment. Um, like I say, the code will be worked on as we introduce or as we introduce more functions to the radio, for example, memories and the like. Um, so we'll put the uh, the code up on the blog in due course. But the Pro Mini, I'm um, just using pins two and three, the interrupt pins, to uh, monitor the output of the rotary encoder. Um, the center pin of that is Earth. Uh, on the other side is the switch. Uh, one side is Earth, and then the other side goes to pin four. Um, pins 5 and 6 are monitoring, uh, that's actually mislabeled, that should be LSB CW, um, and then that bottom switch is 80 40 meters. Um, both the SI5351 and the screen uh, are I2C, so on this particular Arduino, um, A4, uh, the analog A4 pin coming out of the Arduino is SDA, and, and, and A5 is a clock or SCL. And both the LCD and the SI5351 are, are, are fully in, in parallel there, um, taking exactly the same lines out of the Arduino. And uh, for the SI5351, later on, uh, we'll use clock 0 for the VFO, clock 1 we'll use for the um, CW mode. I'm still thinking about how I want to do that one. And then clock 2 will be the BFO going to the uh, product detector. So like I say, um, that's just the, the interim build. Um, and we'll look to update the software uh, in due course. But um, like I say, this is how I like it. I like the switches all open so I can see what's going on. Um, and uh, yeah, so all good. No dramas at all. Um, and like in the past, uh, we'll see how those homebrew mixes go. But certainly if, if I was using a, an SBL1, um, I've had absolutely no problems in the past with driving those SBL ones directly from here. In, in other words, not having uh, an intermediate uh, amplifier amplifying the output of the um, that particular board there. So uh, that'll be the approach as well. So the second thing I want to look at is um, the bandpass filters. Um, so 
what I've done, um, I've used the 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 filters that are pre-potted, so to speak, out of the back of the solid state design for the radio amateur. Um, they have a series of uh, tables in there that's um, that provide with some some values which you can then derive other values. So, and we'll come back to this in a sec. So the actual filter itself is. Um, got two tuned circuits here uh, with a coupling capacitor between the two and like I say the, the back of that uh, particular uh, annex uh, appendix I should say in that um, design book will give out a, a C0 of 224 picofarads it will give you C12 which is the coupling between the two tuned circuits and in the C end which are these two capacitors here it will provide um, for the, this is the 80 meter one here uh, the inductor uh, is 38 turns on a T68-2, normally with uh, 24 gauge wire. That's the red core one. And then to work out the two capacitances here, um, which are the same value, you then uh, just use this formula here. C0 minus C end minus C12 will, will spit out um, the value of the capacitor that needs to be across here. Um, in the past, uh, well, typically those are, are trim capacitors, um, which, which are fine, but the problem with the 80 meter band, it's such a wide band for here in New Zealand from 3.5 megahertz all the way up to 3.9 megahertz, so you're spanning 0.4 megs. Um, any tuned circuit you had, you can only peak and will only be suitable for one portion of the band. Um, so what I have done in the past, and I've, I've done it again, um, I'm going to use a, a variable, a, a quite a large variable capacitor um, to provide that function there. And before we look at it, we'll just run, sort of run through the, the 40 meter um, numbers. So again, exactly the same appendix there. Uh, C0 was 242, C12 7.2 and C end uh, 53. Um, in this particular case, for the 40 meter uh, bandpass filter, the inductor is 20 turns on a T68-6. That's the, the large uh, yellow core, again with 24 gauge wire. Same, same calculations to come up with the value of the capacitors across those inductors. In this particular case, 181 picofarads. Now, I didn't mention up here um, the standard values. So for that 80 meter filter, um, the end capacitors, I just used a standard value of 82 picofarads and then for the, the capacitor between the two, uh, used 8.2. Uh, in the 40 meter case, um, I decided to use uh, the, the end capacitors of 56 picofarads and then the C12 was 8.2 picks. Um, in the end, with a bit of fine tuning, uh, I decided to, through test, to, to up that to 15 picofarads seem to give the uh, the best performance. Um, that appendix <clears throat> also has another version of the uh, the 40 meter uh, bandpass filter using the same red toroid or the T68-2. Um, I made that one up as well and did some tests and then decided that uh, it didn't perform as well as the version up here with the T68-6. Um, so that's the version I've stuck with here. So as mentioned, um, what I have used in the past, and I, I particularly like it, is the ability to uh, to peak. Um, uh, to see, well, that's, that's the capacitor there. So I'm using two segments, um, and each segment is running uh, in parallel with the inductor. And what I decided to do this time, um, just for something different, is to use sort of plug-in modules. So rather than having a switch arrangement with, with a whole lot of wires which cause you know, a bit of a bird's nest um, with a couple of radios back, I decided to play around with using the sort of plug-in boards there. So just little edge connectors down here um, and it's just a matter of uh, lining it up and it just drops straight in. Um, so. The red one obviously is the 80 meter filter and then um, this is the 40 meter filter here. So again you can see those two end capacitors and then the small in this particular case after playing around 15 uh, picofarads uh, with the coupling one there and um, as expected there's no 
parallel capacitor on this because that's been performed by um, the variable capacitor there. So like I say, what that allows me to do, let me just uh, move that across there a bit, it allows me to, to, to peak. So here we are here, um, currently on 3.5 megs, so we can peak that there nice and easily uh, to peak it there. We start to increase now, so that's 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, so already we've lost quite a bit of amplitude there, but again, nice and easy just to peak that back up to where we were. And we can go again, that's uh, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9 megs, and again we can peak that back up. So uh, I, I like that, and um, I guess in keeping, you know, I have no problems tweeting knobs, so um, uh, it's fine by me, I have no problems um, peaking that. Uh, we could go beyond the 80 meter band, but no point. Back down to 3.5 megs, and then we can peak that back up. Um, that works well. Um, exactly the same for the uh, the the 40 meter performance. That's that's exactly the same. So I can tune right across nice and easily the uh, the 40 meter band with that. Um, so yeah. So I think that's actually for me. I, I quite like it. It's just a nice easy way to uh, the change those filters. Um, quick and easy and, and quite painless. Um, Right, what else did I want to cover there? I think that was probably about all actually. Um, that's got a, it's got a reduction gear on that one just to make it a little bit easier. Uh, I think that's probably all actually, so I won't, I won't labour any more now. So next steps will be to, to do the RF amplifier and then we've uh, got enough pieces to at least put together a, uh, a direct inversion receiver for a start. Um, just to test out what's been produced to date um, and then make up those two, um, two bi-directional um, IEF amplifiers which we can then place on either side of the crystal filter and ultimately uh, turn it into a, um, into a super heterodyne receiver. And what we'll do at that stage, we'll come back here, what I intend to do is modify the code here and we will turn this into some test code. Um, so with the rotor encoder, rather than, well, there'll, there'll be two frequencies here. The top frequency will be um, the VFO frequency, and the bottom one will be the beat frequency oscillator frequency, and um, which will give us the ability to uh, fine tune to get those spot on to suit uh, the crystal filter, um, because it's not exactly lined up with the frequency on on the can, so that'll be the intent. We'll just do some test code, and then once we know exactly what the frequency should be, um, we'll then burn those into the, the main code and then and upload it again. So enough said. Um, I will say 73s and make a start on the RF amplifier. Cheers all.